when I think of a woman full of dignity, who walked with her head held up high, whose spirit filled up her whole body, and who walked and spoke like she belonged on this earth and had love to give, I think of Maya Angelou. Good morning and welcome to Lost for Words, where we explore great women poets. I'm Sarah Woods, and today we are starting our journey into the voice of the lovely Miss Maya Angelou. And she is one of my favorites. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm having to like tamper down my excitement a little bit. I've already started to record this video five times because I just start rambling <laughs> and I'm like, I keep having to tell myself, you do not have to fit everything into the first video. She has been like a spiritual mother to me in my life. She just has so much wisdom and she said so many things that have impacted me um, so strongly that um, it's gonna be hard for me to like keep these little videos contained. <laughs> so let's just start, let's just go there. This is Maya Angelou. She is an American poet. She is a black woman. She is African American. And she um, was raised in Stamps, Arkansas um, during the 1930s. She lived through the Civil Rights Movement. She got to know people like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and who was that? James Baldwin. Um, she became friends with Oprah. <laughs> to go from, she was at five years old, her mother and father shipped her and her brother on a train by themselves at five years old. Um, they could not take care of them. Their marriage was falling apart and they just could not handle young children. They shipped them on a train by themselves to go live with their grandmother in Stamps, Arkansas. And she went from um, a childhood interwoven with poverty, racism, and love. She even experienced at a very young age being raped by an older man who um, when she testified about it, they let him off um, in the court, through the court system, but he was actually killed, um, kicked to death by someone. And she spent years of her life not speaking because she thought because she spoke that she killed him. This is a woman, so this is a woman who experienced growing up in the South, um, the poverty, the racism, and she has experienced as a woman or as a child being raped by an older man. Um, she had all these things that sort of like happened in her life. Like if you, if you think of abandonment and rape, like those are two of the like worst things that you could ever like think of happening to someone, like especially a child um, and a child having to to mentally work through those things and heal. Like it almost seems like impossible. But Maya Angelou, like those painful, terrible things, um, somehow this woman, she continually was able to rise and find joy in her life. Um, even when the world tried to like squash it and take it from her. Um, and so for me, when I think of her, I think of, I think of resilience, I think of joy, I think of dignity. Um, she's just somebody, like when you think about her as a little girl on that train, when her mother has given her up and sent her off at five years old alone with her little brother. You know, when she was sitting on that train, you know 
Like she had no vision of her future and what it could be like when she was being raped by um, that older man when she was eight years old. She, in that moment, probably had she had no vision of what her future could possibly be. And like you would think, those things alone would be enough to squash a person. Um, but she rose and she, like, she did, I mean, look what, I mean, she created all this amazing poetry. Um, she traveled, she was in plays, she sang, she um, has written, like, I don't know how many books, like 12 books, or I don't even know how many books. She's written a lot of books. Um, she's been on Oprah. I mean, hello. <laughs> um, so, Anyway, I'm gonna stop there. This is, so this is who we're talking about when we talk about Maya Angelou, and obviously I'm getting very excited. Um, but anyway, we're gonna jump straight into one of her poems, and it's not one that you're expecting me to jump into, I'm pretty sure. I feel like it touches on the part of her and the part of her life that is um, black and African-American. like. That is, um, there are so many poems I'm probably gonna go through that I feel like touch on much more than that. Like they touch on being a woman and they touch on um, just the human spirit. But um, anyway, this one, it feels like it's about, it has an element to it that's about skin color, but it's like very sensual and very beautiful. And I want, I want to read it, okay. So this poem is on page number 10 in the complete poetry of my Angelou, and it is called To a Man. So here we go, I'm just gonna read it. My man is black, golden amber, changing, warm mouths of brandy fine, cautious sunlight on a patterned rug, coughing laughter, rocked on a whirl of French tobacco, Graceful turns on woolen stilts, secretive, a cat eye, southern, plump and tender with navy bean sullenness. And did I say tender? The gentleness, a big cat stalks through stubborn bush. And did I mention amber? The heatless fire consuming itself again anew into ever neverlessness. My man is amber changing always into itself new now new still itself still oh i love this poem i love it so much um if you've watched much of my poetry much of these poetry videos yet you probably will discover that i really do love i love when poetry includes color and where it creates something very like delicious out of the colors. I feel like there's some poetry that uses colors that can make something that's like like a crack, car crash or something <laughs> where it doesn't feel so good. But Maya Angelou in this poem creates something with color that is so delicious. Like I just, I love it so much. Okay. Um, so this poem is called To a Man and when you think of that, it seems very like, it could be any man, you know, it doesn't sound like it's to a specific man. We don't know who this man is, to a man. Um, it could be any man. Um, then she starts off the poem and she says, my man is. So we immediately go from reading the title to thinking it could be any man, to then her being like, my man is. So it has this feeling of possessiveness. Um, this is her man. And she says, my man is black, golden, amber. Like, so for me, like immediately she has me <laughs> because I love those colors. Um, like I love like, I love blacks and browns and golds. Um, like those rich, like kind of like earthy colors um, and she's saying my man is black golden amber 
So for me, when she says that, like I immediately picture this dark skinned man with these like hints of like, um, like gold and amber in his skin. Like it's iridescent almost. Like it's not just a flat color, like flat colored skin. Like there's something very like rich and like, you can imagine the light hitting his skin at different places and the different colors that show up on his skin. My man is black, golden amber, changing, warm mouths of brandy fine. So we go from um, we go from looking or we go from seeing her man's skin to suddenly we're in his mouth. And you can imagine his mouth like gulping down some brandy wine, which is also like a little bit of like deep, what is it, like that reddish, brownish, goldenish color of brandy wine. Um, so there's something very, um, there's something very warm about all these colors. Like when you think of wine, when you drink wine, it sort of like warms your mouth, it warms your throat and your insides when you drink it. Um, black, golden, amber, changing, warm mouths of brandy fine, cautious sunlight on a patterned rug. So now I imagine like this rug with, um, I imagine a rug, rug with like reds and browns and blacks and you know, just like beautiful rug. And then you imagine like the sunlight, like doing its soft thing on the rug and lighting up the colors on the rug. Um, coughing laughter rocked on a whirl of French tobacco. So then you imagine, or for me, I imagine like this deep voice that's like laughing and coughing, um, like a real like hearty laugh and it's rocked on a whirl of French tobacco. So then you see this like dark skinned man with his cigar and he's, um, and then you imagine like the tobacco in the cigar and all the like shades of brown and black that are in that tobacco and how so like you're getting all these visuals of like these beautiful just beautiful colors just these warm golden browns it's beautiful um coughing laughter rocked on a whirl of french tobacco graceful turns on woolen stilts um i don't believe woolen stilts are a thing. I, I think they're supposed to be wooden. Um, and so wool, um, I guess that would be made from like, was it sheep wool or whatever? So that almost seems impossible to walk on stilts that are made from something soft and woolen. So it gives you this feeling of graceful turns on woolen stilts. So you imagine, or I do, I might be wrong, um, let me know if you think I'm wrong, <laughs> but I imagine this man like doing the impossible that he can walk on these soft woolen stilts, um, when they should just like collapse, he can walk on them and he's, um, graceful. And then she says secretive with a question mark, a cat's eye. So then you imagine a cat's eye and I feel like this fits very well with the like, with the amber, with all the colors that she's said so far. Like when you think of a cat's eye, you can think of all those changing, swirling colors in a cat's eye. Like it's like, woo. Um, and then she says, Southern, plump and tender with navy bean sullenness. Um, so then now like, um, so this man, he is, she's told us the colors of his skin his mouth is like brandy wine, um, cautious sunlight on a patterned rug, that hearty laughter, laughing and smoking on the, um, on the tobacco, um, graceful on the woolen stilts, like that height, that tallness, um, and that grace, um, this cat's eye, you imagine his eyes, like I suddenly imagine his eyes like cat eyes. Um, then he's Southern. Um, Maya Angelou was also like, she grew up Southern. 
Um, and then she says, plump and tender with navy bean sullenness. And did I say tender? Um, so then you imagine this like plate of cooked beans that are like really soft. And I don't know navy beans. I don't know what color navy beans are. Um, I don't know if they're dark or white or what color, like what shade of a color they are. Um, so like you imagine a plate full of beans and they're soft. And she says, did I say tender? The gentleness, the gentleness. So now she's like, he is, you know, all these colors. He's brandy wine, he's laughter, tobacco. He's graceful and tall, secretive, cat's eye, southern. He's tender and gentle. And then she says, a big cat stalks through the stubborn bush. And did I mention amber? So we go from like, we're jumping through all these um, like metaphors for what he's like. And um, she jumps from gentleness to a big cat stalks through stubborn bush. So he's gentle, but his gentleness, like you imagine it like a cat, like I feel like this tiger, like walking through softly through like stiff bushes and he's just making his way through the bushes. Um, and, and did I mention Amber? The heatless fire consuming itself again a new into ever neverlessness my man is amber changing always into itself new now new still itself still so she has created for us like this like push and pull like she's created this area that is full of these like rich colors and mysteriousness and it's like it's romantic mysterious um it's rich in color it's gentle it's strong um and she's saying it's like a heatless fire consuming itself um so you just imagine this space of like color that's like heat that just um like it's just i don't know like cons when you think of consuming itself like it's just i don't know this ball of like color and fire um again a new into neverlessness changing always into itself new now still itself so you imagine this man that is like not stale that's I think that's what I that's how I feel when I read this like all this color all these like the wine the tobacco the cat the gentleness the beans like all that um the way it pushes and pulls with the textures and the colors and the feelings um it makes you have this feeling that um okay it makes me think of like, okay, like a pond, if a pond is never, doesn't have an outlet, like, and it's just the same water all the time, um, how it can get like that stagnant, gross kind of smell and look to it. This to me reminds me of the opposite of that. This reminds me of some body of water that is always being like renewed it's still the same body of water but it is not stagnant it is always like renewing itself cleaning itself and fresh and like sort of alive feeling that's what i think of when i think of her man and i'm like you read this and it's so beautiful <clears throat> um i think um I feel like this catches the beauty of a dark skinned man in a very beautiful way, in a very like sensual way, in a very like mysterious way, in a very tender way, um, and makes him very alive. And I think it's really beautiful. 
Like I love, I love what she did with this poem. And it makes me wonder, I do not know, I do not know the history behind this poem. I do not know if this poem was about, I know Maya Angelou, I believe she's been married maybe a couple of times. I'm not sure. Um, I want to say at least twice, but I don't know if this was about like one of her husbands or a man she was in love with. I don't know if this was about her ideal man, um, if this is even a real person. Um, but either way, I feel like this poem, like she has just taken a short amount of words and she has like conjured up this man that's almost like is it an apparition like that. This like, yeah, she's like conjured this man that's like morphing and changing and um, full of all these like rich, delicious colors and he's mysterious and he's tender and he's strong and he's like he's got the push and pull of um, like strength and tenderness like all in one thing and he is not stagnant he is ch always changing into himself like it's really beautiful um God. like I think we'd all like to know who this is about Maya <laughs> who is this man you're talking about <laughs> so we're just gonna stop there today I just want to leave you with that um I feel like I'm just like here's a taste of delicious poetry <laughs> But anyway, that's all I have for today with Maya Angelou. Um, I hope you enjoyed our little our little taste of color with Maya. It was so good. Hey, wait, hold on. So my goal is I jump around doing all kinds of crazy things, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be going through her poetry on Mondays, and then um, I think I'm going to be. Oops, I don't know what that was. I think I'm going to be exploring um, some of her quotes from I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, which is so good. Um, so we can get a broader picture of Miss Maya Angelou um, outside of her poetry. So anyways, hope you have a great week. I'll see you again next time.